Hi there, Bill Horsecutter again with another episode of The Radical Geek. In my, uh, growing up, my mother would take me and my younger brother Mike to play a board game at the kitchen table, or cards. You know, we started off when we were young playing Go Fish, Checkers, Monopoly, and other children, family games. And then we, as I got older, I got into Dungeons and Dragons and chess. And even into Magic the Gathering a little bit. And the Euro games that play out now, known as like Puerto Rico, Sellers of Catan, and Carcassonne. Well, there's been board gaming, as well as other tabletop games, are basically very popular right now. And there's a whole new group of designers trying to create new games that you can play together with your friends and family. And I'm going to talk to one of these groups, these companies here called Multibit Games. They've made a tabletop card game called Button Bashers, which is based off of the old arcade fighting games. So we're going to talk to the crew there, see why they do what they do, and have some fun. Hope you enjoy. All right, I've got a few of the people here at Multibit Games. I have Pat Murphy and Nate Moore, and we're going to talk about the game they made, um, Button Mashers. That's Button Bashers. Button Bashers, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this is actually Button Bashers Turbo. It's the second edition slash is expansion to the first game. Um, Button Bashers Turbo. Okay. How did Button Bashers get created? What was, what, how did you come up with the idea of this game? Um, I love fighting games. I love fighting games. I love literally just bashing on the controller. Like, I, I consider myself to be a tryhard, um, so I like the game a lot. And I was in training mode in Blaze Blue, one of the fighting games that I really like. And um, I noticed that like when you're mashing on the buttons, you can actually see a string of like up, down, left, right, button, 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 and whatever, like spam across the bottom of the screen. And I was like, well, you could just take cards and put that together. And I saw a visual aid of like what a button would look like in pixel art, and I was like, "That could be done. I'm gonna do this." And then, with the help of these guys, kind of exploded into what we got now. I mean, I'm exactly the opposite. I I don't hate fighting games, but uh, I'm so bad at them that makes the enjoyment kind of you know I always lose to Nate at anything we play. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember you know you showing me the def deck of cards, and we. We played around uh, in the very early stages. The character cards were still Word documents. Oh yeah. Um, and I thought, wow, this is this is fantastic. What is this? And then you you kind of told me about it, and um, it was just so accessible to even me, you know. And again, I'm I'm horrible at fighting games, <laughs> so the fact that it was so accessible, it was really good. And and we've been kind of working on it and changing it from there as as we go. Actually, uh, I've been making games in my own time for a long time. Just like nothing fancy, word documents and index cards and whoever. But I actually showed my brother like the prototype of the game, just with very basic looking cards, and uh, he, his eyes lit up and was like, "We could we could sell this. <laughs> People would want to play this." And that kind of got the company off the ground and uh, started getting a team together. Okay, and um, from there, how did you go about prototyping the game? and getting the art and all that stuff. Um, well, the the cards for the game, I was able to art together <laughs> by myself, but the actual characters, I am i can't draw people. I'm not that good. Um, so I, had, I put a thing out on Facebook and messaged a bunch of my friends who I went to um, school with, and I was just like, hey, can anyone do this quality of art? And I actually put up a picture of River City Ransom Underground, one of the characters from that, um, another Kickstarter game. And I had a bunch of people submitting and like, hey, you know, I can help out. And um, we finally found one person who could really do it and would do it for the price that we needed. Cause I mean, it's a business. Everyone has to put money into it. Yes. Um, I had a couple people tell tell me to go F myself. Cause I asked, cause I gave them like, I offered like $20 a piece originally for each individual art and one guy was like, go after yourself, that's horrible. How dare you ask or ask money for something, something along the lines of that, he was a super hippie guy. It was, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of us, but it's 
tough starting a business and getting it up and running uh, cash wise and we've got other lives and other jobs as well um, but I we use the gamecrafter.com for all of our prototyping materials and they're really excellent at, at kind of you know you can put in your art order a deck of cards and then and I think that's the deck I first played with actually yeah um, and so it's really excellent because they can literally build you a game on their site and then send you a prototype copy for really nothing compared to other other websites mm -hmm. um, so we've been using those primarily for uh, for kind of prototyping and printing out different size character cards and things like that. Better than index cards. That much better than index <laughs> cards, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> All right, and um, now, what was the biggest hurdles you had when you tried making the, when you started like going into making the game and prototyping it and playing testing and all that? Um, constantly playing the game. Like, uh, you you do something enough, you start to memorize it, and uh, being the person behind, like, headwaying the actual game and the mechanics and whatnot, uh, there was a lot of times where I had to try to step away from the game and be like, I, I know that a light, medium, heavy special is a hyper combo, but someone who's never seen this before, how are they going to see this and go, okay, that makes sense, like, communicating with them. Okay. Um, yeah. I think from my perspective, I was more involved in the playtesting, um, and so I think for me the biggest hurdle has been people's advice, which which advice should I take, which advice should I not take. Some people have good ideas, but maybe they don't fit with the game. Um, you know, some people have really horrible ideas, but they insist that like this should be in the game, and it just doesn't work, you know, and we, we maybe we already tried it and we know it doesn't work. So incorporating that feedback, but not too much where we're being very reactive and kind of sucking the soul out of, of what we created. Mm -hmm. um, that was the toughest for me. Everybody has ideas. Like, yes. Everyone yes. came to us with ideas, but um, there were a couple people who really like not only said, okay, you should do this to your game because it'd be cool. They were like, you should do this to the game because it would feel more like, like one guy came up with an idea for a taunting mechanic, which is huge in fighting games. Like if you're, especially if you're that high level tournament player where you can knock him across the screen and be like, eh, taunt. And yes. just, as Nate does to me regularly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, so how did you get in the, Okay, so you made the base game, correct? And which is Button Bashers, and now you create Button Bashers for Turbo. Mm -hmm. Why, what came up, how did you come up with the idea of, with the expansion? What does the expansion have over the basic set? Um, well, the biggest thing when we first started making the game, uh, idea is just crazy for the number of characters that we wanted in the game. Um, excuse me. The original game has six characters plus one bonus if you backed us on Kickstarter. But we had, like, huge documents full of characters, and we just wanted to keep throwing them in. Like, uh, the game lends itself to be open enough to be flexible so we could like the game revolves around the characters and what they do so we just wanted to keep adding more characters uh turbo has 12 characters and up to four or five more coming depending on how the kickstarter would have went um and our next crowdfunding project depending on how that all goes so mostly it was the new characters uh we also kind of played with the game a little bit more and found what worked and what didn't about the original and tried to make it so the players had a lot more involvement and choice. Um, one of the biggest negative feedbacks we got from the original game is some people felt like the game auto-played. Like there was, you have a hand and you just always will do the optimal strategy. Um, this version, Turbo, uh, allows players to, instead of just dive right in and do the optimal strategy, to stop and think and be like, wait, maybe if I don't attack this turn and I do, if I defend or if I push out a block, you know, I could get some better cards, build up to a bigger combo. Yeah, I think uh, Turbo is easier to play as well for newcomers. Um, a lot of the feedback we got was positive from people who like fighting games, but then people like me who are not uh, big into the genre, um, there was kind of a, they needed a jumping off point, and I think Turbo does that very well where it's easier to play. Um, and like Nate said as well, I love all the different characters, the way you can combo them together, uh, the more the merrier. And ideally we would, you know, uh, even if it's just one, you know, give away a free card every now and then, just keep creating cool characters as oh, it yeah. goes on. 
even if it's just for a cult audience, you know, who are going to keep playing um, these characters and involving them into into the game. I, th I think that would, that's my ideal dream is to keep the roster growing and growing like an actual fighting game. Yeah, most <laughs> fighting game. I've seen a lot of fighting game card games out there, or uh, um, and they're all like really cool, and a lot of them are parodies of Street Fighter. Because I mean. That's kind of the jumping off point. But we decided to really dive in with these characters being ridiculous and over the top. We have Mrs. Soft Serve, who's a ice cream enthusiast. We have yeah. uh, uh, Slamu, the Slam and Salmon, who's a luchador who... Right, that guy right there. <laughs> luchador who forgot, who lost his memory, got thrown into a fish. This is not a suit. This is a fish. He is inside of a fish. The point is, we have a lot of characters that are just absolutely ridiculous and over the top, and it's supposed you're supposed to look at it and be like, "This is ridiculous," and then just yeah. If you do a double take on some of the characters and be like, "Is that really what I'm seeing?" That's we've accomplished our goal. We want it to be fun and silly and comical, you know, and in, in, in the good way. Yeah, it kind of also reminds me of some of the character reminds me of some of the enemies you see in Double Dragon. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, of that. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, how well? Let me ask you a question. How well did the Kickstarter that you have out work? I mean, when you did the first one, how quick did people come and come aboard on the game to support it? Um, was it a, or did you struggle with it? The original one, the goal was three thousand, and we made it very fast and very easily. Um, the thing about it was, it was also our first Kickstarter, so we had a lot of family support, which was really appreciated. But it's not good for community building. Okay. Whereas um, the second one, we had a lot stronger of a community, people who were like really ravenous for the game, but we had the goal at 8,000 or 6,000? 6, 6,000, 6, yeah. It was just a bit too high for what we were looking for, and yeah. we didn't invest enough into marketing to push it the way we needed to for that number. Yeah, and I think Kickstarter's uh, evolving constantly, and it's a, a funny thing now that there's you know big companies uh, that are going back to the Kickstarter well uh, time and time again and I think that's hurting small companies and I not just us but I know games I've backed on Kickstarter that don't make it um, and it's you know the market is really big on Kickstarter right now and there's a lot of products a lot of games out there um, so I think we released at a time where there was lots of really big um, licensed products out there sequels to big games things like that um, so I, I think that that uh, worked to our detriment at, the, at that time. There's also a game that's running right now, uh, Random Encounters, that has a beautiful like it makes our game look to their art. Um, language, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it it makes our game look uh, pretty poor in comparison. The pixel art quality is really really good on that game, um, but they won the fifteen thousand dollar goal and they're really shy of it. Um, one thing that we got some of the feedback is that pixel art is kind of on its way out. The fad's on its way out. So selling a game that is strictly pixel art in a non-pixely market when the fad's dying was kind of like, that hurt us a little bit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. And uh, if after you do this, what's uh, what do you have planned in the future? Oh my God, we have why so did, many why games. Did you ask it? Why? We have so many games. Uh, each one of us, when we were onboarded here, like we all started off with the same mentality. We have like six games we want to make. Oh my God! And this is kind of like our baby, our money maker um, to get us started. And all the money that we're going to be making from Button Bashers and whatever next game we get is just pretty much going to get keep reinvested into the company, so we can keep making games because. I know I have like four or five games. He's got like four or five games. Uh, this guy's yeah, got like we, eight. Uh, we, we all have our shoe boxes full of index cards and things that, you know, we're, we're waiting to, uh, to get prototypes made and kind of designing the rules in our head. And that's really the fun part, the part that everyone on the team is really passionate about is, I mean, those are the best times, getting a prototype to the table playing it, ripping it apart in some cases, and putting it yeah. together a couple times. That's really uh, what makes me passionate about the company. Um, this uh, this game is strictly a card game, okay. um, and if you're familiar with like Magic Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Force of Will, etc., it kind of plays like that on, on certain levels, but like we have potential for a deck building game, a racing game, a flight simulator game, a coup-esque game, um, 
about dragons and sins or something. An end of the world Cthulhu esque game. Like we hate um, like zombies and Cthulhu go in every game. We're not a huge fan of doing that cliche thing, so we try to put a unique spin on whatever our ideas are. Um, I mean. Pretty much everyone who makes games says that kind of thing. But, you know, it's... No, but I really feel like that we want to... I mean, there's generic universes out there, like zombies, like the generic fantasy theme. And I think that uh, a lot of the games that, that we've talked about are different. I mean, there's there's probably products that are similar out there, but we don't want to jump on the bandwagon. We put Pixlot in the game because we, we like that style of art. We play... That was me. Yeah. That was all me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the amount of retro games I see you play on Steam for your, your computer, I mean, um, so you've got you've got a real passion for that retro uh, game feel, you know what I mean? And so this is not something that we were jumping on a bandwagon with, this is something that we, we felt passionate with. Mm -hmm. And I think the next project, we want to feel the same way. We want to, the theme and the gameplay to be as fun uh, and as interesting as possible. And, you know, so I don't... I don't care about the next zombie game, really, or the next Cthulhu game. I care about the next, you know, finding the next game on Kickstarter that's going to make me do a double take and think, oh, wow, this is an interesting uh, theme, an interesting game, um, and I want to play this to find out what it's about, you know? Okay. All right. Uh, looks like we're... Uh, actually, I think we've got enough time here, but uh, Pat and Nate, thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks for uh, having I hope to uh, see some more tea around, and uh, hope you do. hope you're successful with your games. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye.